Welcome to Celebrity Sleepover. Now, I hope you've come prepared to make some memories that are sure to leave a stain or two, because tonight, we're rocking out with our socks out with the man who's definitely had his fair share of sleepovers, the Red Rocker himself, Mr. Sammy Hagar. Sammy, welcome to my living room. Mom, Sammy Hagar is in the living room. What an introduction. You know how many beautiful young girls come up to me and, oh, Mr. Hagar, and I'm thinking, oh, gee, I'm starting to skew younger. I have these younger following now, you know? And they go, my mother's the biggest fan, or my dad's your biggest fan. Can I have an autograph for them? I'm going, ah, sure I can. You're an absolute rock icon, rock legend. Sadly, we just lost your old friend, your bandmate, Eddie Van Halen. You guys obviously had your differences in the past, but as they say, blood is thicker than water. What was it like to hear the news of his passing? I fell apart. It was, uh, it just was such a miracle that him and I had hooked up about four months, be five months before that, the first of the year. And we just went like this and went, you know, really into some soul talking about doing something next year and all that kind of stuff. At least you had that opportunity before he passed to kind of just get back on good terms, remember the good old days, let him know that you love them. The way I've swallowed this pill and have been able to say, you know what, we made 11 years of music together. We wrote some 40, 50 million selling records and some of the greatest songs in rock history. I'm so fortunate to have that and then have Michael Anthony standing next to me on stage and we play songs like Right Now and Pound Cake and Top of the World and Finish What You Started. It's like, yeah, this music lives. This is what Eddie yeah, left. Yeah, dude. I saw this incredible birthday party that you celebrated. Tell me a little bit about exactly what a boat concert is. You know, the whole thing with COVID, we, we couldn't do it indoors, we couldn't do it outdoors. So we said, well, what if we find a, a beach somewhere, which was Catalina, all there was was a big bay and 180 buoys where we could have 180 boats. They must have had to have a hell of an arm to throw a pair of panties all the way up on stage from out in the water. <laughs> I, I gotta say, Sammy, you've got a, very inspiring story as it relates to your early days in your early life, man. Would you say you'd attribute it more to the adversity you faced growing up or to the advice you received from the aliens that visited you? Johnny, that's a pretty damn interesting question, I must say, my <laughs> friend. Uh, because where you were going with that to begin with was very serious and what, how you ended it was even more serious. Because yeah. truthfully, I think having been poor my whole life and felt embarrassed with an alcoholic father that walked the streets and became homeless in a, a small town to where everyone knew it was my dad, uh, it was tough. But I never, I never felt like I'd never make it. I always felt like I'm going to do it. But the aliens, wise guy. I, I, I got to hear this. Yes. I got to hear this, Listen, man. when I was, had my dream, which was not a dream, but... I was contacted and it was like a wireless situation. They were remote. I could see them in my head when I started waking up. They screamed a numerical code. The, the connection went zip. And from that minute on, I had vision. I went to Cabo for the first time in 1979 and I saw dirt roads, one flight in, one flight out, no newspapers, no TV, no telephones. And I said, I'm going to build a cantina here. I love this place. I bought a house, a condo and I built the Cabo Wabo. Every now and then you see things and you could see all the way to the end of the tunnel. Before that happened to me, I didn't see anything but what was in front of me. Anyway, I'm a firm believer in aliens. Anybody that believes we're the only thing in the universe scares me. I love it, man. You weren't just a front man in one of the most legendary bands of all time. You're a front man, I mean, when it comes to just being innovative. You formed this new partnership with Guy Fieri and Santo Tequila when I sold Cabo Wabo tequila. By the way, I almost threw up when I heard how much you sold it for, by the way, man, so. It screwed me up too. I went, what? <laughs> okay, so guy called me and said, my God, if you ever do that again, I'm gonna be your partner. I said, well, I can't do it for seven years. And then all of a sudden, my seven years are up, and I said, let's go. There you go. All right, Sammy, stick around, man. When we come back, Sammy shows me there's only one way to rock, and that's with mas tequila. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. For more, subscribe to First Look and come with me on all my adventures around the world. Who am I kidding? I'm probably sitting at home watching Netflix or playing Xbox. Either way, what are you waiting for? Just hit subscribe already.